Hi, I'm Professor David Atley, and this is Topics in Astronomy. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'll be talking to you about light, specifically about how it changes as it moves through the universe and what we can learn about the source of that light if we study it with our telescopes. Let's get started. First, let's pause briefly and remember what light is. Light is a wave. Specifically, it's an electromagnetic wave. All wave phenomena, whether it's light or sound or water, have a wavelength, which tells you the distance between two adjacent high points on the wave, those high points that are labeled crests in the di diagram across the bottom of the screen. And a wave also has a frequency, the number of peaks that pass an observer in a given amount of time. And one important feature of waves is that their wavelengths and their frequencies are inversely related. So as wavelength goes up, frequency goes down, and vice versa. As that wave moves away from a source and travels out through the universe, whether that's the solar system or the universe as a whole or even just your living room, there are some important changes that will happen. And the most prominent of those is a change in the brightness of the light. Light obeys what we call an inverse square law, which basically says that as you get farther and farther away from the source of the light, the brightness of the light goes down as the square of the distance. Looking at the diagram across the bottom of your screen, let's imagine a sun surrounded by a series of concentric spheres. So that first concentric sphere, at a distance one, some light from some patch of the sun passes through a little square on that sphere. But then the next sphere out, with a distance of two, the light that passes through that single, single square in the first sphere now is passing through four squares. So the distance has doubled, but the area covered by the light has gone up by a factor of four. If we go to the third sphere, which is at a distance three, now the distance has tripled and the area has gone up by a factor of nine. So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. Light obeys an inverse square law. This inverse square law embodies the relationship between two important observable properties of light, the brightness of the light and its luminosity. And these are related but different quantities. Luminosity is the total amount of light that's given off by a source, and that's independent of any observer. So it's an intrinsic property of the source rather than something that varies depending on where you're standing. Um, so for example, if you buy a light bulb and you install it in your home, and then, like me, because you're a nerd, you look at the back of the light bulb box, it will tell you the luminosity of the bulb. And typically, it will give you some number of lumens that come off of this light bulb, telling you how much light the bulb produces. And that is an intrinsic property of the bulb. It's true regardless of where the bulb gets installed. So if you put it in your house or your neighbor's house or across the city, it's going to have the same luminosity. But depending on which one of those three places you install that bulb, the brightness that you see from it in your living room will be very different. Brightness depends on the observer, and luminosity and brightness are connected by the distance between the source and the observer through the equation that you see on the left-hand side of the slide, which says that luminosity is equal to 4 pi times distance squared times brightness. This relationship between luminosity, distance, and brightness is going to be very important, especially when we come towards the end of the course and we start thinking about what's called the cosmic distance ladder. In brief, if you know any two of the variables in this equation, luminosity, distance, and brightness, you can always solve for the third one. The other change that light can experience as it comes from its source is it can be subject to something called the Doppler effect. 
The Doppler effect affects all types of waves, regardless of their nature. So light, sound, doesn't matter. What happens is if you get a moving source, the source can stretch or compress the waves it's producing depending on whether it's traveling away from or toward the observer. Um, if you've ever watched a race car on television or a car chase in a movie, when the car goes past the camera, you hear this really interesting sound where you hear a change in the pitch of the engine sounds. It goes something like Rum! So you go from a relatively high pitch when the car is moving towards you to a lower one when the car is moving away. And that's an example of the Doppler effect. The reason this happens is illustrated across the bottom of the slide. So imagine an ambulance traveling down the street, its sirens going, it's producing a bunch of sound, and the sound is traveling out uniformly in all directions from the ambulance, except the ambulance is moving. So in the direction that the ambulance is moving, those sound waves tend to get squished together. So the distance between the wave peaks goes down. So wavelength goes down and frequency does what? Pause the video for a second, try and remember the answer. Wavelength goes down, frequency goes up. They always go in the opposite direction. And that's what's experienced by the man on the right hand side of the slide. He's getting what's called a blue shift because the wavelength is decreasing, it's moving towards the blue, low wavelength end of the spectrum, and the pitch that he would hear from this ambulance is going up. So wavelengths going down, frequencies going up. The woman on the left-hand side of the slide is getting the opposite effect. The ambulance is moving away from her, so she's going to experience a red shift. Rather than being compressed together, the wavelengths get stretched apart, so the wavelength increases and frequency goes down. So by observing a source of waves, whether it's sound or light, we can figure out whether that source is moving towards us, giving us a blue shift, or away from us, giving us a red shift. And if we're careful, we can even figure out the speed of the source by calculating the fractional change in wavelength. In this video, we've talked briefly about the nature of light. Light is an electromagnetic wave characterized by both a frequency and a wavelength. And those two are inversely related. So every time wavelength goes up, frequency has to go down. And then we talked about what happens to light as it travels through space. That the brightness of light decreases as you get farther and farther from the light source because the same amount of luminosity has to spread over a much larger area. And we also talked about the effect of a moving source of light, which creates a Doppler shift. If the source is moving towards you, you get a blue shift and wavelength goes down. Whereas if the source is moving away from you, you get a red shift and wavelength goes up. Thank you for joining me for this video. And I hope to talk to you again soon for another topic in astronomy.